Hi guys. Uh, this rendition of Maverick PC Gaming and Tech Tips is actually going to be showing you guys how to make a quick modification that if you're running an old system um, is actually going to be quite helpful as far as cooling. Um, anybody who's ever tinkered inside or around the chassis of a pre-built machine knows that they're all pretty unique to the model that was built in the line. For instance, you wouldn't really be able to find this hard drive rack anywhere else or a stock hard drive rack a universal one and put it in here because it more than likely wouldn't fit right um you know things like that would make it very difficult as far as modding or adding anything to a chassis like this but um with a little ingenuity you can see that even the biggest problem can be solved if you put your mind to it a friend of mine gave me this machine to fix said that his os was freezing up and needed to be upgraded anyway this is a pretty uh standard older western digital hard drive of 320 gig um, he has the optical drive up here, power supply is only a couple hundred watts, um, and as you can see the CPU cooler is still stuck. This however is not. Alright guys, as you can see over here I took a Corsair fan, 120 millimeters, and I affixed it to the back of this machine. Um, when I got this PC from my buddy, uh, wanted me to fix it for him, there was no cooling in here. Okay, the only fan that was actually physically in this machine was this one here and this is only just to go ahead and keep the heatsink cool um, this is a cooling system for the CPU uh, for those of you who are not sure what it is that I'm pointing at but this see this fan I put here so that I can go ahead and take all of that hot air out of this chassis uh, an exhaust fan if you will now having said that guys this is a 120 millimeter fan I have tons of 120 millimeter fans laying around but this exhaust vent is only about 80 millimeters in circumference okay i don't have a bunch of 80 millimeter fans lying around i actually have none because i don't know who the hell keeps 80 millimeter fans lying around but i do have a ton of 120 millimeter fans lying around and so what i did was using these which as far as i'm concerned are like gold i took scotch fasteners which i bought from target um and they're just round discs of velcro they have adhesive on both sides you would fix it to the four corners on the opposite side obviously and I just went ahead and stuck it on there and as you can see it's on there pretty sturdy um, unless you try to rip it off it's not going to come off um, I actually got it um, the idea to do that when I did my build I upgraded the machine and there's hard drive racks here that um, I wanted to continue to drag air across as you can see these 220 millimeter fans here these are the SP um, silent edition from Corsair the blue LEDs so what I did was in the front I used um, zip ties to go ahead and hold them together for stability and then I used the velcro over here so that it can just go ahead and stay on the hard drive rack without trying to find ways to screw that on or zip tie it on and be a pain I can just go ahead and simply remove them for cleaning purposes and then just stick them back on there when I'm done that air is reinforced by the dual 140 millimeter fans that are there already that came stock with this case um so and only because i know how important cooling is guys i had a machine that came um very similar to this one years ago when i owned my first desktop pc i had actually put uh an nvidia galaxy video card at 8400 series i would believe of course here in the um pci express slot in the 16 time um, and the machine became so hot that the resistor caps in that card actually blew off um, because there was no exhaust fan in that one either. Um, when I opened this machine, this was what was over the exhaust port, the exhaust vent. I'm not sure what in the living hell this is supposed to do. Maybe hold out dust, but I'm not sure what dust is going to go ahead and be pushed out through that vent when there was no fan there to begin with. This is actually uh, plugged in to an adapter. Um, from this power source, from this header, to a um, adapter that turns into a 4-pin Molex and then just plug directly into the power supply. Um, and it makes all the difference in the world, guys. Um, if you have any questions in the world, believe me, it's sometimes older machines are harder to deal with. This RAM, is, this is 3 gigs, I actually had to scrounge around to find DDR2 um, memory to go with a 64-bit processor, but as everyone knows, the older 64-bit processors work with DDR2 RAM. These DIMM slots are for DDR2 RAM. It's 3 gigs um, with 
um, an AMD Athlon dual core 64 bit processor um, running Windows 8.1 with onboard and video graphics. Uh, other than that, guys, if you have any questions or you uh, want to know about any other mods that I've done, which I've actually just come off the top of my head, please feel free to let me know. Thank you. And here's the finished product, guys. I'm not doing it from a screen recording from a desktop because anybody can screen record a desktop and tell you that it's a certain computer, but, you know, here it is, the uh, e-machine that I was just telling you guys about, and, um, you know, it's an AMD Athlon dual core processor, 64 bit processor with onboard and video graphics. There's no graphics card in this machine, as you guys saw earlier. Um, and you know, it's it's just a simple upgrade, but sometimes that makes all the difference in the world, especially for people who, you know, aren't ready to buy a new computer or put a whole lot of money into a custom build and you got a loan machine and you want to keep up with the times. This is as good as anything else, guys. All right. As always, thanks for watching.